There seems to be a, a kind of a cycle that is, is sort of endemic in mass human behavior, it seems. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of optimism gets generated. People start, you know, building stuff or they come up with new ideas and they start, you know, employing people to make these new things that they're going to sell. People start getting excited about the new promise that's mm -hmm. offered by these new things. Right now, of course, it's fintech or it's Bitcoin. So a lot of people start putting their investment money into mm -hmm. this. Um, that, of course, fuels yet more growth. At some point, people begin to borrow in order to buy the stocks that are issued by these new companies. And now it's debt financed, and that's when you get into serious, serious trouble. Um, and of course, that's why it was such a danger sign last November when it turned out that some people were taking out mortgage loans to buy Bitcoin. Right, <laughs> but, so, but, so that's, that's actually, that's, how, and it's very hard to tell how much of it because of exactly. this crypto tenants, the crypto side of it. Yeah, and the key is there's no inherent limit as to how much credit can be generated, especially if you have a, a private banking system or a shadow banking system right. where you've got private institutions that can extend credit sort of ad libitum, right, right as much as they wish uh, up within you know, until some limit, until some regulatorily imposed limit kicks right. in, but that's usually far too late. Well, so there's a kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy element here too, just like on a, in a bank run, in a boom, Everybody's sort of optimistic, and so they start borrowing in order to buy stuff, mm -hmm. uh, to buy securities, basically assets that they mm -hmm. think that where they think the price is going to rise. And what they're essentially doing is every one of them is doing something that's individually rational. If I can borrow really cheaply and use the borrowed funds to buy something whose price is rising really rapidly, then there's what we call a spread, right, between the mm -hmm. capital gains appreciation rate on the, on the one hand and the borrowing rate, say it's the interest rate mm -hmm. or some other form of, of borrowing costs. On the other hand, people are basically just sort of legging the spread, as we say, between those mm -hmm. two things, right? And there's no inherent limit to this, or at least there's no, you can't like point and say, oh, when we get to you know 10,000 units of credit, it's all over. You, you never know when it's gonna stop. Mm -hmm. But what you do know is that at some point it will stop. At some point the credit will run dry, and then all of these people will suddenly realize, oh my God, this is sort of a bubble. This price is maybe gonna go down. I better sell it now before it goes down. Everybody sells it massively. It's essentially the equivalent of a bank run. Right. Instead of running on the bank's currency, you're running on whatever this asset is. But now here's the key. If you've incurred a bunch of private debt in order to make those purchases, then you're gonna end up in serious trouble because when the price of the asset that you bought with the debt drops, the mm -hmm. debt doesn't drop. Debt is a fixed obligation, yeah. right? Whereas the price of the thing that you bought with the debt is a variable thing, right? And those so, who bought it with with actual currency, actual cash, they also just, lose money. They lose that money. Yeah. But what's even worse is the people who lose more than their money, the people right. who are in debt. You actually get lots of people, and you remember the word that was used after the mortgage crash in the uh, about 10, 12 years ago, was people being underwater mm -hmm. on their mortgages, mm -hmm. or there was a mortgage debt overhang. Both mm -hmm. getting at the same things. The basic idea is people suddenly owed more than they owned, right? Another way to put this in sort of accounting terms is you had millions of people, literally millions of Americans, who had negative net worth. You actually owed more than you right. had. Now that is that's catastrophic. That leads to what the great American economist of the 1920s and 30s, Irving Fisher, would have called a debt deflation. Yeah. That's what the Great Depression was. That's what the what the uh, the sort of aftermath of the 09 crash was. All these people who are negative have negative net worth. They don't spend money. Right. So all of a sudden, the entire economy grounds to a halt.